All right, so I was browsing through Nike's website and I found a pair of sneakers that I've never seen before and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to try those out. Uh, this is a nice budget-friendly pair. Retails is only $75 and it's a Nike E-Series AD. And this shoe uh, is very uh, interesting. First of all, it comes in like a weird box. It's like a perforated line right here so you can actually pull and break the box. Who, what sneaker guy wants to do that? I think that the reason why is because they wanted to use this as a shipping box. Uh, but it did come double boxed. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe there was too much backlash from people like myself were like, dude, I don't want to use this as the shipping box. Please don't do that. Uh, but yeah, maybe that's uh, what's happening. But this is the shoes right here. They're kind of interesting. These were like kind of like a, a modern day Roshi run. That's the way I looked at it when I saw it on their website. I was like, it kind of reminds me of that. I love the Roshis from back in the day, but we've also evolved so far in the footwear space since the original Roshis came out, which when Roshis came out, they were considered like the most comfortable pair of sneakers available, right? But now you have these, which is like a more modernized version of that. However, is it comfortable or not? How are they on feet? Let's go ahead and get in. So I'll give you some words from what Nike says, and then I'll give you just a general overview of some of the things I like and dislike. E-Series AD, $75, everyday comfort that gets a modern look. The E-Series AD was designed with ease of entry in mind, which will have you reaching for them day after day. Breathable mesh and cushiony foam strike the perfect balance between comfort and support from that first step to wherever the day takes you. Again, it just says it's a foam midsole with responsive cushioning, textile upper that feels incredibly soft and lightweight. So not much of a description here. Obviously, this is a shoe that they're just making for everyday consumption, and it literally says that all day, every day on the bottom of the insole, which is nice. It's nice that they actually include that. Now, checking, they don't really have removable insole. So that was the number one thing Roshi's had. They had this really cool removable insole. These, it looks like I'm ripping the uh, the bottom when I'm pulling that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that back down there. As for sizing, I would say that these do fit a little bit snug. It does say on Nike's website that they do fit snug and I didn't realize that until after I already bought them in my true to size. So I got a 9.5, they are snug. I would go up personally a half a size, especially for a little bit of wide footer gangs like myself. Overall thoughts out of the box. I think it's a pretty interesting looking shoe. Some of the things, again, I like, some of the things I dislike. Uh, I like that it is simplistic. I think that is kind of nice. In hand, I don't know if I appreciate the design elements as much as I maybe thought I would in the pictures. Like there's a pretty large side panel to the shoe here that overlaps under the midsole. And at first I was like, yeah, it looks kind of cool. In hand, it, it kind of looks out of place to be honest. Uh, but the heel cup area, I kind of like. There is a stretchy little band back here that uh, helps you know the lockdown of the back of the shoe. And then the shape of the, the heel and stuff I like as well. Also, there's some pull tabs look nice there. And then the mesh is kind of like a Roshi sort of mesh. Uh, you do have a weird little seam across the uh, toe box though, which is interesting. I don't know necessarily why they decided to put the seam across the toe box. I don't know if it's a design aesthetic or if it's functional. Then you have two other seams on the sides where there's added reinforcement uh, with a little side panel down here that is also stitched together to that uh, weird wing that they have coming across the side with two little colorful stitches. I do like that. I think that just a small amount of color, uh, but it adds a little pop to the shoe. Then you have an embroidered Nike swooshes on those side panels as well. The foam midsole is interesting. It's a very hard foam midsole. It definitely does remind you of like the Roshis, the same sort of uh, density of, of that foam. It's not anything like uh, soft by any means, and it's not soft on feet either. It's fairly firm on feet, which is okay. Like I like soft, squishy sneakers for sure, but um, but I do like firmer all day, every day sort of sneakers as well. And this is one that is a bit firmer than I think some people might prefer over a softer, squishier shoe, but I'm just pointing it out. This is a firm outsole, midsole, and it's one unit, it's one foam. You don't have any outsole rubber traction or anything like that. It's all the same sort of foam. So some of the things I like, it really does kind of look like an updated Roshi, which if you like the Roshis from back in the day, cool. I think this is a fun, different sort of pair, new pair that's uh, available out there for you to try. I also do like the pull tabs on the shoe. It's nice to have large open pull tabs on the heel as well as on the tongue. It does make it easier to put on and I appreciate that, especially getting a little bit older. Price point at $75, another thing I like, this is a shoe that will go on sale. You could probably get it for 40, 50 bucks. I think that's a great buy and it's a, one of those bargain shoes that you can get, especially if you get them for under retail, half a retail even, and you'll be like, dude, it's a pretty nice shoe. As for some of the things that I don't like about the shoe, the midsole is comfortable, but it's also sculpted and it's also shaped weird in the heel where it kind of 
rolls up. And for me, it felt a little bit wobbly as I'm kind of walking around in the heel section. Just the left to right rolling was just not very stable. So the stability could use a little bit of improvement. Obviously, if you're paying attention to your feet and paying attention to walking, uh, then you're not going to have any issues. But, you know, some people are clumsy and stuff. And so that extra little wobble back here just might throw some people off. So I wanted to mention it. Also, I do like the tongue and the width that you have to be able to put the shoe on. However, there is a weird little overlapping wing section here, which I didn't really appreciate uh, because you do have this large panel that comes over the top of the sides. But underneath that, you do have these small little wings that just kind of just baby wings that stick out underneath here. And then it kind of like collides with the tongue. I don't know if it's supposed to tuck underneath the tongue or go over top of the tongue. The overlapping nature of that is just a little bit odd. It's not uncomfortable though when you put it on your feet, even if it's over or under, but the overall wearability, it's not bad. Like you don't notice like it rubbing or feeling layered over top of anything. It's just, it's just weird. I don't know. I like it when there's more balance and symmetry to a pair. For this, it feels like the symmetry is a little bit off. So is this an overall buy for 75 bucks? I would say, yeah, it's a comfortable shoe, comfortable enough that you can wear these and go, yeah, it's a nice pair. But if you can get them on sale, 30, 40 bucks, even better. I will link them in the description of the video if you guys are interested in buying a pair of them. And if they do have colorways that are available on sale, uh, they should be showing up as well for you. So make sure you click each of the colorways when it takes you to Nike's site. And sometimes different colorways are different prices, so worth a look. So are there alternatives to this shoe that I would recommend? Well, if you're spending $75 on a pair of running sneakers, my personal preference is always to get the higher end late model instead of the lower end like base model. So I would rather have you guys go get a Pegasus on sale or Infinity Run on sale. If you can get the Invincible runs as low as 75 bucks, that would be a steal. That's a crazy comfortable shoe comparison in my opinion. Uh, but I'd say the Pegasus is a better option if you can find them. Pegasus 40s, 41s are coming out eventually this year. And then Pegasus Turbos I posted as low as like $60. I think that's another good one as well uh, for the same price point as this, so even a little bit cheaper than these. That's an amazing price. Those ones retail normally at double this at 150. Uh, so that's my, my thoughts. I always love to find the sales and I always post them on Collective Kicks and I always try to post you know deals, videos and stuff on YouTube for you guys every month. Uh, so hopefully you guys are checking those videos out as well. But have you guys tried the E-Series ADs or not? Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know pros and cons you guys have on these if you guys have tried them. I think overall, again, not bad shoe. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, drop a like on the video. Thank you guys for watching. Again, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more content soon. All right, peace guys.